So welcome back friends to another very exciting video on the homestead. I don't think that there's anything more fun than when you have a little spare time sitting down on your computer uh, going over survival kit videos. I, I enjoy that. EDC videos, survival kit videos. I always pick up tips or learn different things from people with other experiences or maybe just things that I hadn't thought about. And so that's what we're going to be covering today. So it's twofold. So today we're gonna to be doing what this is gonna kind of, how this is gonna be is a motorcycle survival kit for enduro riding, for guys that are, if you're gonna go out into the back country for a long time, but if you don't have a motor motorcycle, this could be a glove box kit. A lot of this stuff goes either way. Camel, wh whatever it is that you ride, uh, you can you could benefit from this. So part one is going to be the backpack side of it, the survival kit. This is how I ride. A lot of people um, that I used to ride with basically do the same thing. And you separate your bike side, your tools and, and parts, bits and pieces for repair in kind of a waste bag or a fanny pack. This is kind of heavy because it's got wrenches and steel and, and quite a bit of weight to it. And to get that down low on your back and off your shoulders, uh, to me, is advantageous. So let's jump in first to the backpack. We'll go through every item, uh, the philosophy behind it, and uh, we'll have a little fun. So uh, let's take a closer look. All right, here we go. Pull up a chair, get your favorite drink. Settle in for the long haul. Okay, just briefly the, the pack here. So this is a, this is a, what is it? MSR, Malcolm Smith Racing. This is a dirt bike pack. Um, any pack will do. The nice thing about these is the dirt bike stuff is, is built pretty heavy duty. It's really, usually really pretty affordable. Um, and it rides high on the back because you have to remember, you know, kind of like those of you who are wildland firefighters, you know, this, you're going to carry this toolkit on there. This is, which is really reminiscent of a shelter, you know, similar to that. So you want something that rides up pretty high. Also, a lot of these packs are going to have sort of a bungee deal on the back. If you're riding in the mountains, you're going to be shedding, adding and shedding clothing a lot. And it's nice to be able to stuff it under here in the back have your buddies you know help each other out grab you know you can add and subtract things without digging into your pack uh, hydration capable you certainly you definitely want that uh, apart from that eh, it doesn't really matter just get something and make sure it's got a waistband on it it doesn't have to have a, like a big super s suspension one but something that um, will keep it from flopping on your back and something you know any sort of a, a back a mesh back or something like this that's kind of porous it will keep let some airflow in between it to keep you cool because dirt bike riding is very very physical all right let's just get into it here so what i'm going to keep in here is 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 uh, my camelback thing so these things have bite valve or these things have locks on them but it seems like you forget to lock them um, and then you put it down and you sit on it or you put a bag on it and it leaks all over, get your gear all, all wet. So what I'll do is I'll lock that valve and I'll just stick it in, stick it in a pocket and zip it up. That kind of seems to help protect it a little bit, plus it keeps it clean. So this outside, I'm not going to really put too much on the outside because I want to keep the weight as low and close to my back as possible. And that means anything out here, you know, I might stick some snacks or um, some toilet paper. I've got some spare contacts in there, but that's it. I, I do not typically want to use those exterior pockets uh, unless I have to. You know, all of this stuff in here, I might drop some maps in there, but I'm not going to use it. Everything, the bulk of it is of course going to be in the main compartment. Okay, and now that's gonna be divided into a couple different ways too. I do not like uh, things bouncing around in a pack loose. I wanna have things kind of where I can grab and go that are organized in bags. So this here, uh, this is the GPS that I'll be using. I'll, I'll do a video on this, but I'll be mounting this onto the handlebars uh, so I can access it. So this is a 64 Garmin GPS map 64 ST that I've got preloaded with uh, topple maps in my area. I've used this uh, GPS extensively in wildland firefighting and it is really great. It acquires signals very, very well. It's extremely robust. You just, not, you're not gonna be able to use your phone. Uh, it's not gonna be waterproof. You're gonna have battery issues. This is gonna run off of double A's and it's super, super reliable. So how I'll mount that uh, is of course, if you don't know about RAM mounts, I mean, they're just, they're awesome. They make, um, uh, you, how it works is everything is, is uses a ball system. So there's a ball that will mount to the handlebars and then a small connector rod, and then you can swap these out. So when you, if you buy your mount and you upgrade your GPS to some, you know, to something different in the future, you can, they're very affordable. You can buy a new cradle for it or your iPhone or whatever it is that you want. They're great mounts and they really are uh, super rugged. I think everything is USA made and it um, is, it's, it's, 
it's motorcycle proof. Uh, they're just awesome. So that, that I'll keep that in the bag and that will go on uh, when I'm riding. I won't keep it on there uh, because you know, what happens is, is if you go in, you know, you go in to eat, you know, you're with your buddies and you pull in and you leave your GPS and stuff. You know, some people will steal that stuff. So uh, I'll throw that in the pack because it comes off really quickly. All right, so bag this, all of the survival stuff, everything except for the space blanket is going to go into this bag, which will break down into sub bag. A space blanket, if you're riding in, if you, if there's a chance that you're going to spend the night out, don't skimp on this. This is something that I was really resistant to carry um, in my wildland pack, and I have since uh, had a completely different change of heart. It, it's multi-purpose. It can be used as a as a litter. If you have someone that needs to be uh, carried. Uh, or slid out, it, you can use it for a litter with multiple people. It can be used as a signaling panel. Make sure you get one. Don't get the blue ones or the dark green ones. Get the one that's red. You could stretch that out and throw some rocks on it and you could be seen uh, from the air if there is an aircraft looking for you. This is how we, we use these to signal aircraft uh, for wildland fires. Um, I've spent a night in these before and it really it saved my life in a cold windy area. I mean, I don't know literally, but it made my life a whole lot more comfortable because I had it. Don't get, don't think you're going to get away with those cheap little Mylar ones that come in the pack. They're tempting because they're cheap and they, they don't take up any space, but they can't be compared to the original space blanket ones. They're just, it, they're wonderful. So that is, that's going to go with me. Um, a two liter or a three liter would be better. Uh, Camelback bladder of your choice, whatever you want. The, I'll, I'll take the two liter and I'll throw some extra ones in there. Um, that's just what I, what I have. Okay, so that's that basically covers the hole oh, in the saw. Now I, it's really important to have a saw, especially when you're riding in the spring. Of course, it came out of the chief in the spring because of, of all of the branches and trees and things that come down. Now I've debated back and forth whether I should go with a folding saw because that's what I used to use versus one that has a sheath like this. And I've decided to go with this. I like this better because I can jam this down between the radiator and the frame on my bike and I don't have to take my pack off to access it if I have to cut a whole bunch of stuff that's like we keep running into things. I can take it out of the pack, I can jam that down in there, I can pull it and it rides well. So, and, and I, I, I like the shape of it. This is the best forestry saw that I have ever used. I like it better than any of the silkies I've ever bought. It's a uh, Ichiban, I-C-H-I-B-A-N Samurai, and it is per Perfection. It's absolute perfection, including the sheath. It's even got a sheath on it with a quick attach deal, which I use all the time. You can put that on your belt and you can snap it on when you're doing tree work. This is a real popular uh, saw with, uh, with arborists, but that's the Ichiban. That, that is a great, a great saw. Okay, let's get into the survival kit and then we'll do the tools last. So this is just, uh, this is just a coax your bag uh, that I use for organization. Now on top I'm going to have a, um, a rain jacket. A rain jacket just doesn't have to be anything fancy. This is just one I got at a garage sale that I go back and forth between my wildland stuff. But if it starts raining you're going to want this. And also it's really good for warmth. A non-breathable jacket if you have to spend the night out in combination with the um, space blanket is actually really warm. Uh, it, it makes a big difference. So you, so you definitely want that. It doesn't take very much. Um, in addition to my first aid kit, I'm going to keep this on top. I'm going to have an Israeli bandage and a quick clot um, for a major, major trauma. That way I don't have to dig in the bottom for my, you know, band-aids and bee sting stuff. These, these, are, these two will kind of right on the top. Um, I could deal with an with, with a injury uh, right away. I'm going to be uh, taking a headlamp as, instead of a flashlight because when you're working, if you have to work on a bike and it gets dark, the headlamp is, gives you hands free. It's a lot better. Make sure whatever you choose to have backup batteries for these. So keep running with fresh batteries in there and then have a whole nother set after that. Um, so you can, you can keep that going. The black diamond uh, headlamps, I, I like them. I've got a couple of them. They've been really good and robust. This one's been on many fires with me um, and it's been a, a great headlamp. There are a few things that I, I, I've been making my list here as I'm getting back in this that I don't have uh, that I will be adding. Uh, one, for example, will be a toe strap. 
A tow strap is if your bike breaks down, uh, you can tow your buddy out. We've done that before. You, the lead bike or the bike that's still running will hook a, a carabiner to the foot peg, which sounds a little bit weird, but it works really good. Um, and then you hook it, you wrap it around the handlebar in a way that the guy, if he gets scared, can let go and it'll come loose. We'll talk more about that in the future, but this will be part of that tow, that tow capability, which I don't have yet. I gotta get a piece of webbing. Okay, bag number one. We're getting gonna get into the nitty gritty here. Can see, can you see? Make sure that I make sure I'm focused here for you. All right, that's a little bit better. Okay, in here I'm gonna have some sunscreen. Uh, I like the stick type because you can take it and rub it on your face. You're gonna be covered really well. I don't typically get sunburned, but I've ridden with a lot of guys that uh, that that don't think about this, and so I bring this because it's pretty light. Especially when you get out there with a ruddy, red-headed, light-skinned person, and they'll just fry you know, on on their on their nose and stuff. So I'll, I'll take that with me. This here is just a waterproof match container with the British Lifeboat matches. These are the these are the good ones here. They are super robust survival type of of matches you can see look how look how far the sulfur goes down there on them should i zoom you up here a little bit let's zoom you up here you still focused okay all right at that british life boat, boat matches make sure you have the strikers inside you need to take a little piece of the striker those will lighten anything with some gorilla bram duct tape wrapped around there Nothing new here. These are going to be the, a set of batteries for my GPS. I can, um, I don't, I can wire the GPS, or I have wired GPSs into the uh, bike's electrical system. I'm not going to do that. It, it's an ingress for water. It's, a, it's. I don't, I don't, I don't like messing with the bike's uh, electrical system. I'd rather just change a couple batteries. So I've got two changes of batteries. So there's, that's enough to, to go. Probably any ride that I'll go on. And these cases are really fabulous. They're the. Uh, they're, they were designed for aviation. What's the, oh, there's a name on there. What do they call these things? They're called aviation.com or something battery holders, and they isolate everything so they're not just jangling around in your pocket, making contact with each other and running down. So these are good. One thing that I do is they've got a little cutout for them right there. See that little hole? And so if I have got a battery that I've used partially, I'll spin it around. And what that tells me uh, is that it's discharged or it's low, and I don't want to use that one primarily. So usually I use that with rechargeables, but uh, um, but just something to think about. So uh, that's the battery carrier. Uh, I'm going to have some uh, insect repellent. Mosquitoes can be really bad when you stop. Um, and then a couple fire starters just... Um, Choose your poison, whatever you want there. So a couple different ways to start a fire. Where's the fire steel? Uh, I'm not bringing a fire steel. I, 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 can get a, I can get a fire going with that as well as some other things I've got in here. So that's that bag. Bag number two, and not in any particular order here. I'm just, I just like to have things organized. Um, some safety pins for any repairs of uh, straps. You can do that, that can be kind of helpful. Uh, here's a cut, some more duct tape, uh, a signaling mirror, 50 feet of paracord, some leather boot laces. Um, I don't need, I don't know why that's in there. Maybe for a friend. No, I'm not taking two space blankets. Um, a lighter right there, just a small Bic lighter. That's a, another backup way to have a backup fire. Uh, you could go with a life straw. If, if you run out of water, uh, it would be pretty nice if you had to get something out of a mud puddle uh, to use the Aquamira water purification tablets. And then you could fill up your camelback, drop one of those in there, maybe a life straw, but you can't use a life straw to fill up your bag. So I think this is a better choice and they weigh nothing. And then the last thing in here would be, of course, a, a whistle, like a Fox 40, a really good whistle. It's loud. Uh, that can be really nice to have if you need to be rescued and found, if you ran off the trail uh, and you go horse. And then an extra set of batteries for the headlamp. And those would be the triple A. So that takes care of that right there, right? Is there anything else in there? Oh, yeah. No, we've got more. We have got more. But I've got to put this back before I... Don't want to get confused. Okay, so in the last few items in here, I'm going to take a bandana for um, a million different reasons. If the sun, you know, keep the sun off your neck, if you need to get in, well, who knows, lot, wash your hands, any, lots of different things in there. And then a super lightweight beanie. You're not going to want to, if you get trapped out there or stuck out there, you're not going to want to spend the night 
wearing your motorcycle helmet. So these weigh nothing, these fleece beanies, and they, uh, com they compact really well, and they are a godsend when you are cold. Uh, to put that on, wrapped up, wrap up in your space blanket, put your, your rain jacket on, and you can, you can get through a lot. Um, trust me, I have done it, and it was not that uncomfortable. And then, of course, a very comprehensive basic first aid kit. Uh, my, if you don't want to build your own first aid kits, um, the best ones out there, I have no question, as an EMT, I know, uh, are my friend David Pruitt, AMP3 LLC. If you want to, he's got everything from huge first aid kits for whole, you know, large parties to individual IFACs. He's a, an ER doc. He's one of the best people I've ever met in my entire life. I just think the world of him and his family. And he runs a side business as a, as a good Samaritan. He doesn't need to do this. And he puts these together um, and puts together wonderful comprehensive kits. Um, so go over to his channel if you don't want to build your own. I'm not going to go into detail on this. We've done that all before. Uh, but that's it. That's going to cover all our needs right there. So how much does this stuff weigh? Well, I don't know. I could probably estimate. I've got my three bags, right? We've got our beanie and our deal. And we've got a couple of trauma dressings right there. Let me zoom you back out here. Focus, focus. And we've got a beaner. A toe strap will go in there, headlamp, and the rain jacket, right? I would imagine this whole thing would probably weigh I don't know, maybe three pounds. Very light. Very, very light. A lot of capabilities in there, a lot, a lot of stuff. Um, but that covers that. Okay, so that's the emergency survival kit comfort items, right? All right, let's get into the tools and bike repair stuff. Now these, it's funny, I was watching uh, so this Australian Enduro channel and he was talking about these bags. They use these over there too. I call them bum bags. Bum, B-U-M. We're just, we're all a little bit different, aren't we? Okay, so what this is, is this is a dirt bike specific bag. And I kind of set this up. If I'm, I'm gonna always take this with me in the future. Even if I'm just gonna go down the road and I don't need water and food, I'm gonna take this here because it's gonna have the tools in it. Um, and it's pretty unobtrusive. And, and so I've, I've got a couple, maybe a couple duplicate things in there just for that reason. Also, what's kind of nice about this one here, and I think they all do this, is it's got the, it's got this webbing that goes over here like that. So you can store a rain jacket or article of clothing on the back. Um, that is, it's all right. It's okay. it's okay. The other thing is, is that you can flip this around. Right? Where's it on your? I'll wait on where on my back, but flip it around to the front, and there is this idea that there's a map pocket in there which I don't think that I've ever used. I, I, it might be a good idea. I'd probably keep a map in there. I, prim I usually use the GPS, but uh, that's, that's there. All right, so the outside pocket. Let's start on the outside and work our way in. We've got uh, three things in the outside pocket. We've got um, uh, repair stuff here. We've got a tire kit here, and we've got a pair of black nitrite gloves. So the reason, this right here, this is a, I love these little containers. You get these from the Forest Service. They come with little first aid kits in them. And whenever I get one, I, the first aid kit's really pretty terrible, but the cases are awesome. And I like this case because I'm gonna be taking um, an, an epoxy uh, for repairing metal. Let's say, you, let's say you crack the side of your case on a rock and you're leaking oil. If you can get that, save that oil, or tip your bike over so it stops doing that and you can um, clean it up and you can put the stuff on there and it's kind of like a JB weld type of thing. What I found with this stuff is when it's loose in the pack that it, that it leaks all over everything and makes a terrible mess. So you have to kind of protect it. So you want to put it in some sort of a tube. I'm going to zoom you up here. Some sort of a tube or a uh, a hard container so that doesn't happen and that's where this comes in and something new that I'm trying that I haven't used before this is a new product that I have used on a car one time what's it called <clears throat> fiber fix it's a uh, it's kind of like a it looks kind of like a black <clears throat> a black bandage you know like you wrap your ankle for and and you uh, I think you put water on it and it hardens like steel it'll just fix about anything you could wrap it around a hose that was leaking um, you could probably even wrap it around an engine casing um, that was leaking and fix that. So I, 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 I'm going to try to take that. It's very light. It's a little bit bulky, 
Um, but I, I'm going to take it on the long rides, rides just in case. You know, and I, I, I've kind of got this set up so that I can add and subtract. Do I, if I'm going to be riding, is that backwards? If I'm going to be riding close to the house where I could get back reasonably and I want to cut some weight down, I don't want to deal with all this, I, I can eliminate some stuff, right? I can take this thing out and set it aside and add it for when we go like real backcountry long ride stuff. So that's kind of why I, <clears throat> it's kind of my philosophy as I separate things. Gloves are, are uh, self-explanatory. This is a tire repair kit. Now I will be installing tubeless uh, tire, a tire system onto the tires here. Actually, when I get done with this video, I'm going to put them in. Um, and so this is kind of set up for that. That's why there's not an extra tube and there's not a, not a patch kit per se, uh, because I might add to that, but this is what I have for now. Uh, so one thing with the tubeless tires that if you do get a major puncture is you can repair with, uh, with, with, with these plugs. This is a plug. This is, I repaired you can repair car tires with these tractors, lots of things. And this is the reamer, and this is the, the plug tool that pushes it in. I've got a video on that if you want to watch it. This is a very clever inf uh, inflator system that's really much smaller than a pump, and that it uh, threads onto these CO2 cartridges here, punctures them, and then you can inflate your tires uh, with this tiny little thing. Really cool. Uh, I've got a Schrader valve tool right there, removal tool, an extra cap. Um, some extra Schrader valves, and all of that stuff fits nicely in here. This is the reamer. That, that reams the hole before in prepping for putting the plug on. And this is things is pretty sharp. I'd hate to be impaled by that thing, wouldn't you? And so I put a p piece of fuel hose on there, which is also can be used uh, to fix um, broken lines if I needed a little piece of hose or lots of different things. So you, you want to have, you want to be thinking about that stuff. And... Always, always, you're going to be learning and, and adding as you go on and, and you get out there and you break and you think, oh, I wish I would have had this or I wish I would have had that. Um, it's, it's hard to account for everything, but you can, you can, you can do a lot. Okay, so that's there. So that, that's, oh, in, the, in, in here I'm going to have also in this package, I'm not going to take them out, a nice selection of zip ties. Heavy duty ones and smaller ones. I've got about to a dozen in there of the good ones, the, you know, not the Chinese Harbor Freight ones, that, that ch which are not very tough and break real easy, especially when it gets cold. Um, you want to get the good ones. So get an assortment of zip ties um, in there. Okay, here is the, I'm going to have to zoom you back out here. Here is the tool kit. Let's see. Let's turn it this way. I think you can see, see better that way. All right, there. Let's focus one more time. Okay, so uh, what I have here, I'll start at the top, is electrical stuff. So there's some jumper wires in there. If I needed to repair with alligator clips, if I needed to repair uh, some electrical stuff, there is uh, some shrink tape in there, which I don't necessarily put that there to, for, you don't want to shrink tape electrical. Uh, it's kind of, it's just a nice thing if you have to deal with a, something that's rubbing or abrasive, or you could, you could use it to fix lots of things. I'm going to have some uh, small clamps in there, little pipe clamps and things that you can um, uh, repair hoses and such. And I'm also going to have a, a good set of fuses. Now my bike only uses the 10 amp red fuses here, but I bring some, some 20s and 30s uh, for anyone else that anybody that has uh, a different bike you know you always have to kind of think about having stuff for other your other riders too because a lot of people are just not very very prepared um, and if they're the weakest link if and if they break down that means you can't ride either so it kind of benefits everyone to make sure you have everything you can to at least get them going so it doesn't destroy your ride as well uh, in here I'm gonna have the tools and then this is something it's gonna have to get flushed out because this is a new bike and I haven't really worked on it too much. So when I'm doing my maintenance, I'm always gonna be working out of here and that's gonna tell me anything that I have that's deficient. So of course, I've got the tools, the stock tool, the, came, the stock tool kit that came with the bike. What I've added in here is um, some uh, baling wire that's bent over in half. So several pieces of that. Uh, this is a, a combination wrench that's gonna work for uh, the rear axles and I think there's a 32 millimeter and all that stuff. It can be doubled as a, 
as a tire bar too, as well as two dedicated tire bars. Uh, I've got that. I've got a Leatherman Wave. You know what, when it comes to multi-tools, you guys who have watched my channel know that I'm not a huge fan of them, but they are perfect for situations like this. And I keep, I've tried a lot of them. My favorite one, the one I keep going back to is a Leatherman Wave. I think that all around, I think it's the best, the best multi-tool out there um, in the whole bunch. These are gonna be uh, all of the little sockets. Uh, they'll be eight, six, eight, 10 millimeter, th the, the Torx sockets, the, the Phillips and regular screwdrivers. What I have done is I have, um, I, I ordered, instead of having a screwdriver that they're kind of heavy and bulky, I've ordered these. This, this is from my old bike um, from uh, Snap-on. It's a regular and a number two Phillips that I can use with just having one handle. That way I don't have to have all the multiple things. This also doubles as a socket driver. I can use that to snap on the sockets. And then one thing that I've really liked uh, that I bought years ago was a mini breaker bar. Everything in here is quarter inch drive because the bike's pretty small. And I also keep an extension in there. That's been really handy because it can give you lots of force uh, to break anything loose that you need to. I, I've, I've, I liked it. It doesn't take up very much space, a lot less space than a ratchet. So you're not really thinking about speed and convenience when you're putting these things together because if that was the case, I'd put an impact gun in here, right? Uh, what I'm thinking about is weight and usability, versatility more than anything. And then of course, right here, I've got uh, the wrenches, spoke wrenches, 10 millimeter, 13 millimeter, all the wrenches that we'd need to do what we, what we have to do. And, and this, as I said, this kit is going to be added to as I work on the bike. That's just what I put together for right now. There's two more compartments on the side and these are kind of uh, convenient comp compartments because they, you can reach around the side to your waist and they're right there. Uh, and I, my brother-in-law saved me one time when we went on a ride and both of us were just, we just hit the wall. We were so tired after about a 60 mile ride we didn't take enough food and he had these uh, goo energy deals in his pack and he gave he had two of them and he gave me one and it just gave gave us a little boost of strength to to do that last 15 miles or so that made life much more comfortable so i've carried those ever since i'm also going to carry in here two pair of earplugs the bikes are pretty noisy and if i'm going to be riding for any length of time i'm going to put earplugs in just to protect my ears and uh, make the whole experience a little bit nicer and the reason for two is in case I lose one, I've got a spare right there. So I'll keep the earplugs and the, the energy stuff right there on the side. And over here is very similar on the side of the belt is another pocket. And this is the last pocket. And I'll just do a couple of uh, energy bars in there, power bars, whatever you like. It doesn't make any difference. So all of that uh, fits in this small waist pack. It's quite compact. It's not very heavy. What's it weigh? I don't know. I'll have to, I should have weighed it before I did the video, uh, but it's, it's not bad. You don't, it rides really low on the back and you don't really notice it's there. The thing I'm not super stoked about is this plastic thing that's hanging out there, but um, I, I do want to carry that repair kit. So we'll see that might not, that might not stay in there. Uh, that's a, that's a new thing. But once it's zipped up, it can be cinched up pretty good with the Velcro, you can see here. And that's a pretty compact little unit right there that rides uh, really well. Uh, it's perfect for dirt, dirt biking. These, these have been around a long time. Um, they haven't changed a whole lot. Guys really like them. It's because they work, they're, they're comfortable and, and uh, you just don't want to go out there without your tools. All right, well, let's uh, wrap it up. So I think all things being considered, that's a pretty good start. Uh, one tip for you, so uh, one thing I think uh, a, a lot of us find challenging is if you have, uh, you know, multiple kits. So, you, you know, let's say you have a 24 hour, a 48 hour kit, you know, by your bedside or you have, uh, uh, you know, d different, different things going on. Uh, you got, most people can't really afford, you know, to have multiples or duplicates of everything. And when you start robbing things out of packs, like, oh, I need my headlamp or I, I need to grab my, uh, my first aid kit out, out of, you know, and, and going back and forth between multiple packs, it becomes impossible to track and then you end up someplace and, and not having something you really need. So something what I've done is, you know, there's some things in here that I've had to take out of my uh, wildland kit that I want to use now uh, that I don't have duplicates of uh, GPS, for example. 
so what I'll do is, is uh, keep a Sharpie in all your bags, put it in the compartment somewhere, and some uh, marking ribbon or duct tape. Just something that you can tie on and write on. What I, I like to use the orange marking tape that, we, that like foresters use, that you can, get, you can get that stuff anywhere. And what I'll do is I'll, if I'm taking the headlamp and the GPS out of, out of my wildland kit, I'll, I'll write that on the flagging, I'll tear it off, and I'll tie it on some places obvious on the outside of the pack. And what that tells me right away is when I grab it, that I will have uh, like, oh, something's missing. Uh, what did I take out of there? Uh, oh, I need to get that. And then you can go there and get it. And it's, it's, I have not been able to figure out a better way to track than that. It, it just takes a, little, a minute to do it and then you're set. Also, I mean, you have a computer to printer, right? So make a contents of what goes in your bag. I've done this for my wildland stuff. I've done it, I do it for my mountain biking stuff. I do it for my skiing stuff. And, and throw it in a sandwich bag, print it out, throw it in a sandwich bag, and, and put it in your pack, right? What does, it, what does it take? You know, it doesn't take up any space. Plus, you could always use an extra sandwich bag, you know, for, well, let's say you want to put your phone in there and keep it dry. Um, and then, and then you, can, you can have a, you don't have to reinvent the wheel every, every spring or, you want to go into your hunting pack and like, oh, well, what was, I spent like three days, you know, making everything perfect and I can't remember, you know, what, 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 what I did. Write it down, uh, print it out, email it to yourself. So if you do lose this, you can just, you can email, you know, print out another one, put it in your pack. And as you think of things, you could write it down on there. So that's what I have here. So some things that I, obviously that I want to add to this that I don't have, um, that is, uh, was a tire gauge for one. The tire gauges that I have are kind of crude. They're, they kind of start at 10 PSI. I need to get a tire gauge that's a little bit finer because uh, with the tubeless tire system, I'll be able to run this, you know, like at seven or eight pounds. And I want to be able to, to know on that. So I'll add that. I want to add some links to the uh, chain, um, some chain repair links. Um, uh, spark plug, I want to add that. I want to add a set of levers. I think, I think this uses the same lever for the brake and the clutch. So I'll check into that. So I want to add an extra lever and a shifter. A shifter uh, deal. Uh, I've seen those broken off before. They're aluminum. They don't weigh very much. I'll throw that in the pack as well. Uh, the toe strap, which I talked about. A chain breaker, a way to break the chain. And then a miscellaneous bolt kit. <clears throat> There's a... There's companies that put them together, kind of a, a good general purpose bolt kit. They're about $20. You can get them bike specific that has a whole bunch of the bolts, the common bolts that are gonna wiggle, you know, fall out or vibrate out, or you're gonna break or just lose. Uh, you can have that, and I'll, I'm gonna put that in here too for those long rides. So if I do have something that comes out and something's flopping that I can replace it. Um, and I might even add Loctite. I hadn't put that in there. I, yeah, I think I will. I think I'll put a little 234 Loctite. I'll, Write that on there, and then um, I can start putting that stuff together. So, as I and as I think about it, so that's it. That's the kit. <clears throat> Excuse me. If there's anything you can think of that I forgot or should add, please put it in the comments. Um, we're all this is we're all learning together, and that's why we I think we like to watch these videos as we uh, we, we we pick up different things from from one another that we hadn't thought of. So, I think that's it. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. And we'll see you on the next video.